Hello, my name is Dennis Murfiotto. I'm going to talk to you today about an introduction to teaching pronunciation. By way of an agenda, there's three topics we'll talk about. The first is to ask the question, why is good pronunciation important? Secondly, we'll look at the pronunciation of consonant sounds in English. And finally, we'll look at the pronunciation of vowel sounds in English. So let's start with the question, why is good pronunciation important? It's important for a couple of reasons. The first is, when we don't pronounce English clearly, it can be difficult for our listeners to understand us. If our grammar isn't perfect, often we can simplify our sentences and make them comprehensible to the listener. There tends to be less wiggle room, let's say, in the case of pronunciation. If we don't get it and state it clearly, it's much more difficult for our learners. Now, for the bilingual teachers among us, it's particularly important that we speak clearly for our learners because we are models for them. And secondly, they can hear and respect our credibility as a competent speaker of English when we demonstrate good pronunciation. So as a learner of Eng English in Korea, we can ask ourselves, what are some problem areas? What sounds do Korean learners tend to struggle with? There are a few. In the case of consonants, the F sound, V sound, the Z sound, the Th sound, Th and Z. All of these sounds tend to be difficult for Korean learners. In the case of vowel sounds, U, U, E and W, among many other sounds, can be challenging for Korean learners. We'll come back and we'll have a chance to look at all of these individual sounds and think a little bit more about what we can do to ensure learners pronounce those sounds as clearly as possible. Now, before we get into talking about the specific sounds of English, we need to have a good understanding of the parts of the vocal apparatus. And if we look here, this diagram demonstrates all the different parts of the mouth that concern us when we're teaching English pronunciation. So if we start here at the teeth, we see the alveolar ridge. And that's the little ridge just above your teeth. So if you make the sound t, 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 the tip of your tongue is actually touching that ridge. Now behind the alveolar ridge, the next area we're concerned about is the palatal area. And that Often we know that as the roof of our mouth. And so when we make this sound, shh, we can feel that the blade of our tongue is almost touching the hard palate, or the palatal area of our mouth. And at the back of the mouth is what we call the soft palate, or the velum. And when we make this sound, lung, 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 we can feel the tongue, the back of our tongue, touching the velum. Now, down here below the velum, down in our throat, we have the glottis. And the glottis is the sound we make when we say huh, huh. When we make an H sound, we can feel the glottis tighten a little bit. Or in some dialects of English, some people might say, British speakers, some British speakers say what instead of what. And when they say what, they're actually closing their glottis. Now, if we come back up to the mouth again, we see the teeth the dental. And so, for example, if we make the sound we're using our teeth to make that sound. And that's dental. Labiodental, again, is the sound of the teeth touching the lip. So if we say or again, we're using our teeth to touch our lips. And the last one is bilabial. And bilabial means two lips. So if we th say the sound p or b or m, we're touching our two lips together, and that makes a bilabial sound. And all of this comes into play when we start to think about teaching pronunciation. Teaching pronunciation, I often liken that process to teaching dancing, except teaching dancing with the lights off. What we want to do here today is think about how we can 
shine a flashlight in there and give learners a window into what's happening inside the mouth when we pronounce the various sounds of English. So when we look at the individual consonant sounds of English, there are two things that we need to keep in mind. Where in the mouth we pronounce the sounds, and that's the place of articulation. So is it at the front of the mouth? Is it at the back of the mouth? Is it down in the throat? Where is it? The second thing we need to keep in mind is the manner of articulation, and that is how are we pronouncing these sounds. All sounds of English begin with air in the lungs, leaving the lungs and coming out the mouth. And then we do things to that air. We bend it, we shape it in different ways, and that makes the different sounds of English. So when we change the air, if we close our mouth a little bit and make it come out really fast, like as in it's using friction, and that makes a different sound. So when we look at the different sounds, we have to think about where in the mouth is it happening, and what are we doing to that air that's coming out of our mouth? How are we changing that air? So for example, if we look at the first sound, p or b, we can see I'm using my two lips. That's where in the mouth it's happening. It's happening in my lips, and I say b. But what am I doing to the air as it's coming out? I'm making the air stop and then explode out of my mouth. So I'm saying p, b, and that's why it's called a stop. I'm stopping the air as it comes out, just briefly. Now, if we notice the difference between p and b, they're almost said the same way. The place is very similar, and the manner is very similar. However, there's one slight difference between p and b. When I say p, I just let the air come out, I briefly stop it, and let it explode out of my mouth. Now, when I say b, I'm actually changing, vibrating my vocal cords a bit. And so as I vibrate my vocal cords, that makes a slightly different sound between p and b. This is known as voicing, that vibration of the vocal cords. Now the next bilabial sound in English is called a nasal bilabial. And nasal is when the air comes out of our lungs, but rather than coming out of our mouth as it usually does, we force the air out of our nose instead. So if I say, mmm, mmm, we can feel the air coming out of our nose. And this, again, because I'm using my two lips, I'm closing my two lips, is a bilabial sound. That's the place of articulation. But the manner is, instead of coming out of my mouth, it's coming out of my nose. So if we look at a labiodental, an example of a labiodental is labiodental fricative. Now when we think of fricative, a fricative reminds us of the word friction. And so when we think of the air coming out of our mouth, we're almost stopping it, but not quite. We're coming, we're closing our mouth slightly, but we want the air to come out with friction. So if we say a labiodental sound, that's also a fricative. An example is We're forcing the air out, not completely blocking it. Now, a voiceless fricative, there's no vibration in the throat, is the F sound. But if there's a slight vibration in the throat, I think you can guess it's the V sound. Again, the place and the manner of articulation is very similar. But the main difference is that rumbling down in the throat, the voicing. Now, the next sound we're interested in is a dental sound. And again, dental is fricative. It's an example of a fricative sound because the air's coming out and we're causing friction. But the difference, rather than labiodental, lip and teeth, we want just to be dental. So we take our tongue and we put it between our teeth. The voiceless version of that sound is And the voiced version, with the rumbling of the throat, is the next sound, the next group of sounds, is the alveolar. And again, that's that one where the, the tip of the tongue touches the back of the teeth, just above the back of the teeth. And so we start with the t sound. And t is voiceless, 
the voice version is d. So it's a alveolar stop, voiceless is t, and voiced is d. Now if we look at an alveolar nasal, we again, we take the tip of our tongue, put it to the alveolar ridge, and let the air come out of our nose. So in this case, mmm, mmm. I encourage you, as we make these sounds, go ahead and make them with me, and that will help you get a sense of what the various parts of your mouth are doing as those sounds are made. So if we look over here at the palatal sound, we can see that the hard palate is used to make a fricative sound in English. And the example is of a hard palatal sound with fricative. Voiceless version is shh, this sound, shh. And the voiced version is zh, zh, as in treasure or pleasure, measure. So the next sound is actually straddles is a combination of sorts between alveolar and palatal. And this is an affricate sound. An example of a voiceless affricate is ch, is in church. And then an example of a voiced affricate is judge, the first and the last sound of the word judge. Now, if we look at the velum, the soft palate, the first combination with the soft palate is a voiceless K sound. So K is a sound we use with the soft palate and voiceless. Now, the voiced version of a velar sound is the g, g sound, the g sound, the hard g sound, g. And that's a voiced velar stop because we're stopping the air coming out. Now, the next one is a velar sound with nasal. So the manner of articulation here, what we're doing to the air as it comes out is we're changing it by putting the air out our nose. So we say, in this case, Mm, the ung sound, we are using the back of our tongue just like the G sound, except the air is going out of our nose. And then the last sound we're interested in is the glottal sound. And the glottal is a fricative. We're not stopping the air, just like with the f sound, we're not stopping it, but we're constricting it a bit. So in the case of the word huh, hot, happy, healthy, that first sound, that H sound, is an example of a glottal sound that's also a fricative. Now, as we think about the consonants of English, the most important things, again, to keep in mind are what's the place of articulation? Where in the mouth is this happening? Is it happening with the lips? Is it happening with the teeth? Is it happening with the hard palate? Or is it happening with the soft palate? And then the second most important thing is what are we doing to the air? How are we changing the air as, it, as it's coming out? Are we stopping the air? Are we putting the air out our nose? Are we causing friction on the air coming out? And that's the manner of articulation. Now that you've had a moment to think about which sounds go into these boxes, here is the answer.